This here is a modification of the Stanley Meyer circuit. Uh, the only real difference is that after the blocking diode I've got a bifiler coil, but the second wire on this bifiler coil only has one end of it hooked up to the circuit. The other end is free floating. And this is the only way that I could get a reasonable amount of resonant behavior out of the entire thing. There's my part list. Nothing too special. And my power supply is running at 12.5 volts, which goes into my IRF740 MOSFET. My signal generator is a BK Precision 4040. That then sends uh, square waves into my toroidal transformer. The primary here has 80 turns, the secondary has 600 turns. That then goes into my uh, diode blocking diode. One wire of my bifiler coil, which has 600 turns on it for each wire. And that then goes over into my water cell, the outer tube. This here is uh, mostly, it's pretty much distilled water. Okay, so it's pretty pure. Then the inside of that goes to a light bulb. And the light bulb then is connected well, par the output of that is connected both to the secondary wire, uh, the second wire on my bifolar coil, and the secondary on my troidal core. And the other end of this wire of the bifolar core is hanging in, in air. It's not connected to anything. But there is a capacitive coupling b between that and uh, the first wire in that bifolar coil. So, here's me testing it out. As you can see, as I vary the frequency on here, the bubble rate varies, but also the brightness of the bulb varies. And the brightness of the bulb, see, there you go, see, that, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty bright there. And that's only because I'm hitting a resonant condition. At this condition, my bubble rate here in distilled water is maximum. Now the impressive thing about this is that I'm using 12 volts in from my power supply. And distilled water is, you know, it's pretty insulative. Of course, it's higher, higher voltage there uh, due to the step-up transformer and the voltage intensification circuit, but overall it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Now when I vary the frequency down, you can see the amps go up because that's power being wasted in our square waves trying to make it through the primary of the troidal core. But then when I turn the frequency up again, you can see it peaks up, peaks out at around uh, 0.8 amps. And that's when my bulb's the brightest and my bubble rate is the greatest. And again, it's all working with that wire there just hanging in midair. Now if I disconnect it from that uh, second wire on the bifiler core, if I just bypass that second wire, it, um, see there you go, it's bypassed. So now I'm just going from the bulb straight to the secondary on my toroidal core. Now as I vary the frequency, nothing, you can see that there's really no power going through. Okay, but as soon as I touch it to the wire, boom, comes on. So, somehow, either the capacitive coupling on that second wire, or, uh, I don't know, who knows? I'll explain it some other time. Okay, so now we're going to vary the frequency on here, and we're going to see what the waveform is going into the water fuel cell.
Now I'm about to hit the resonant point, which is right there. At this resonant point, uh, you can see that the DC mean voltage is the highest, and I've got a pretty nice sine wave laid on top of that. Okay, so I'm going to try it one more time so you can see how the bubbles change. And that's about as good as I can get at the moment with the circuit that I have. That's maximum bulb brightness. See, I'm just flicking the sweet frequencies here back and forth a bit. And there you go. Now the tube on the inner tube is only in there about two inches. I pulled it out a bit because I found that it makes better bubbles because the capacitance is lower. And I think with the lower capacitance between the tubes, uh, my my. Uh, five filer coil has a little more power. Now if I hook it up to the other end of that second wire, nothing happens. So I have to hook it up. Okay, I, I do get some bubbles out of there, but it's nothing compared to if the bulb and the secondary are connected to the other end of that second wire in the bifiler core.